I'm Haley Williams of the Buffalo Buttes, and you're listening to the Experience Hockey Talk. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Experience Hockey Talk, Serious Hockey Talk for Serious Hockey fans. My name is Michael Lindemann, and we are brought to you by the Tilt Kilt in Frederick, Maryland. The Tilt Kilt Pub and Eatery located at 5605 Spectrum Drive in Frederick, Maryland. Come to the Celtic themed sports pub featuring the world famous Tilt Kilt Girls. For more on Tilt Kilt Frederick, visit them on Facebook today. And today is April 28th. Um, as you can tell, I am solo. No Dixon, he had to work late at our job trying to get some things cut up and no Haley due to work and school so just me so with that we're gonna hop in the NHL news and notes for April 27th real quick uh Ben Bishop of the Tampa Bay Lightning Braden Holby of the Washington Capitals and Jonathan Quick of the Los Angeles Kings are the three finalists for the 2015-16 Vezina Trophy which is awarded to the goalkeeper adjusted or judged to be the best at his position the National Hockey League announced uh, ben Bishop of the Lightning, after establishing a career high and franchise record with 40 victories in 2014-15, Bishop shared fourth place in the NHL with 35 wins this season. He also surpassed Nikolai Habi Bullen as the winning goaltender in Lightning history, finishing the campaign with 115 for Tampa Bay. Bishop paced the NHL with a 2.06 goals against average and ranked second with a .0. 926 save percentage, both career highs and single season franchise records. His six shutouts also were a career high and tied for second place in the league. Bishop is a Vesna finalist for the second time after a third place finish in 2013 14. Brayden Holpe of the Washington Capitals. Holpe equaled a single season NHL record with 48 wins, tying the mark set by New Jersey's Martin Brodeur in 2006 7. To backstop the Capitals to the 2015-16 President's Trophy as the league's top regular season club, Holpe, who tied a franchise record with 41 victories in 2014-15, became the seventh goaltender in NHL history to record consecutive 40-win seasons, and the first to do so since San Jose's Evgeny Nabobkov from 2007 to 2009, who did it three years consecutively. <clears throat> The first time Vesna finalists ranked fifth in the NHL in goals against average, 2.20, and sixth in saves with 1,661, and eighth in save percentage with a .922 save percentage. And then Jonathan Quick of the Los Angeles Kings. Quick led all NHL goalkeepers in appearances, 68 starts, 68 in minutes, 4,034, and ranked second in wins with 40. Fifth in saves with 1,671 and tied for fifth in shutouts with five in 2015 16. He became the first Kings goaltender to reach 40 wins in a season, breaking his own club record of 39 from 2009 10. The Milford, Connecticut native recorded his 41st career shutout March 14th at Chicago, passing Frank Brimsek and John Van Beesbrook, both with 40 for the most by a U.S. born goaltender in NHL history. Quick is a Vezina finalist for the second time after a second place finish in 2011-12. The Anaheim Ducks were on the wrong side of their own uh, re repeating history at Honda Center last night. The Nashville Predators made their own. The Predators handed the Ducks their fourth straight Game 7 loss all at home, winning 2-1 to one to take their Western Conference first round series. Colin Wilson and Paul Gostad scored first period goals, and Pekka Rene made 36 saves for the Predators, who were playing the first Game 7 in franchise history. Nashville won a playoff series for the first time since 2012 when the Predators eliminated the Detroit Red Wings in the Western Conference quarterfinals. Nashville will visit the San Jose Sharks in Game 1 of the Western Conference second round tomorrow. 
and Shane Prince scored two goals, and Thomas Grice made 33 saves to help the New York Islanders defeat the Tampa Bay Lightning 5-3 in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference second round at Amelie Arena on yesterday. Travis Hamannick, John Tavares, and Cal Clutterbrook scored for the Islanders, who took a 4-1 lead in the second period, while Andre Palat, Nikita Kucherov, and Vatila Filpula scored for the Lightning. And then in NWHL news, the New York Rivers and Connecticut Whale, the National Women's Hockey League, have traded the rights to Hannah Brandt and Dana Trevino. Both general manager Chad Wiseman and Lisa Giovanelli announced Brandt, is a first-round pick by the Whale, chosen second overall in the 2015 NWHL draft. In four years with the Gophers, the forward collected 285 points, 115 goals, 170 assists, in 158 games. Trevino was drafted in the fourth round, 13th overall by the Riveters. At BC, Boston College, the forward scored 138 points in 148 games. Trevino recently earned a gold medal with USA Hockey at the IAHF Women's World Championship. In addition, the Whale will receive a $2,000 tax draft tax towards their salary cap from the Riveters as negotiated by Wiseman and Gio Finelli. Brant and Trevino may continue any contract negotiations already in process with their new club. This is the second trade between the Riveters and Whale this offseason, who traded second-round picks Haley Scarupa and Michelle Picard the day before. And Alyssa Gagliardi has signed a contract with the Boston Pride for the 2016-17 season. General Manager Haley Moore announced yesterday. Gagliardi and the Pride agreed the terms on a one-year $14,000 contract. Gagliardi skated in 17 games for the Pride last season, contributing six assists, and played in all four playoff games. She won the 2015 Four Nations Cup Championship with USA Hockey last fall. And then going into today, April 28th, in NWHL news, we will be saving the NHL news for Monday, on April, for today. Uh, NWHL news for today, the New York Raiders and Boston Pride have traded the rights to Alex Carpenter and Maya Deonch. General Manager Chad Wiseman and Haley Moore announced today. Carpenter from Boston College was drafted first overall by the Riveters in the 2015 NWHL Draft. At BC, she scored 279 points in 150 games and won the Patty Casimir Memorial Award her junior year. She won a silver medal with USA Hockey at the 2014 Olympics. Maya Donch uh, from Harvard was drafted 15th overall by the Boston Pride and collected 122 points in 135 NCAA games. In addition, the Riveters will receive $2,000 towards their salary cap from the Pride as negotiated by Wiseman and Moore under the ta- draft tax bylaws. Carpenter and Donch may continue any contract negotiations already in progress with their new club. Bray Ketchum has signed a contract in New York Riveters for the 2016-17 season. General Manager Chad Wiseman announced today Ketchum and the Pride agreed Ketchum and the Riveters agreed to terms on a one-year $15,000 contract. Ketchum played in all 18 regular season games for New York, tying for first in team scoring with 14 points and leading the team in goals with 10. She also played in both playoff games for the Riveters. Then today, Amanda Levely has signed a contract with the Buffalo Buttes for the 2016-17 season. General Manager Rick Sealing announced today Lavelle and the Buttes agreed to terms on a one-year $15,000 contract. Lavelle, who played for Minnesota, was drafted 12th overall in the 2015 NWHL Draft by the Buttes. In net for the Golden Gophers, Lavelle played in 116 games, posting a .94 save, in save percentage and a 1.18 goals against average. She completed her collegiate career with a 98-9-5 record and three NCAA National Championship titles, including one this year. And then... Maya O'Dench, who I mentioned earlier, has signed a contract with the New York Riveters for the 2016-17 season. General Manager Chad Wiseman announced today Deonch and the Riveters agreed to terms on a one-year $10,000 contract. Deonch, who played for Harvard, was drafted 15th overall by the Boston Pride in the 2015 NWHL draft, but was traded to the Riveters earlier today for Alex Carpenter and a $2,000 draft tax. The Ford scored 122 points in 135 NCAA games. And with that, we're going to go to break. And when we come back, we're going to take a look at the Western Conference second round. Mm 
Looking for hockey cards to build your collection or that specific card you would like to have to get signed by your favorite player? Then I recommend Just Hockey Cards out in Silver Spring, Maryland. Donald takes good care of me when I'm looking to build my collection and he'll help you too. For inquiries, reach out to Donald at Blake4AV at AOL.com. That's Blake4AV at AOL.com. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Experience Hockey Talk, Serious Hockey Talk for Serious Hockey fans. And we are brought to you also by AwesomeCon. AwesomeCon, which is June 3rd through 5th, 2016 at the Wall Street Washington Convention Center in Washington, D.C. Come see special guests like Adam West, Burt Ward, Marina Baccarin, Bill Nye, the Science Guy, Kevin Smith, Riddle, and many others. For more information, please visit awesome-con.com. And... We now look, now that we both have both series for the Western Conference, we are now going to do our second round preview. <clears throat> Starting off with the one that we knew about first, the St. Louis Blues versus the Dallas Stars. It's a new world order in the Western Conference, and the Dallas Stars and St. Louis Blues want to place their claim as its best team. The Central Division rivals, who finished 1-2 and two in the division with Dallas winning it with the best record in the conference, meet in the Western Conference second round for the right to advance to the conference final, which has been the domain of the Los Angeles Kings and Chicago Blackhawks for each of the past four seasons. The Blues and Stars played five times in the regular season, and there was little to separate them. St. Louis won four of the games, two in overtime and another in a shootout. Each team won a game three to nothing. Left wing Jamie Benn and defenseman Alex Goligoski led the Stars with five points each. Benn had four goals and ten points in the first round when the Dallas Stars defeated the Minnesota Wild in six games. Defenseman Kevin Shattenkirk led the Blues with five points against the Stars, and forwards Vladimir Tarasenko and Paul Stasny each had four points. Tarasenko had four goals and two assists in the first round, finishing with one point fewer than leading goal scorer Jaden Schwartz. The te- these teams last played in the Stanley Cup playoffs in 2001 when the Blues won a four-game sweep in the second round. Uh, for me personally, uh, it's a tough one to call. Um, I think this one will be going the seven games. Um, it's tough because, I mean, St. Louis obviously knocked off the Chicago Blackhawks, the defending Stanley Cup champions. That's a great big momentum boost. Um, and then with Dallas, you got the question mark of what's going on with Tyler Sagan and is he going to be able to play in this series. So you got to look at a few factors on both sides of the coin. Um, who has the momentum truly going into the series is one thing. Um, as we, you know, kind of mentioned with the Islanders earlier today, you know, they won their game because they had two days rest, whereas the Lightning had a bunch. So the Lightning ha- didn't have the momentum really rolling their way like the way the Islanders did. So yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see how these uh, two go at it. Uh, but to pick or choose, I'm probably going to go. With St. Louis in seven, and I'm putting a question mark next to that. Um, for Dixon and Haley, I don't know who they're picking, but I'm I'm just gonna say right now I'm gonna say St. Louis in seven. But it wouldn't be surprising if Dallas wins it in seven at the same time. And then for the series that we finally found out about last night, the San Jose Sharks versus the Nashville Predators. The Nashville Predators played in and won their first Game 7 in their history last night, defeating the Anaheim Ducks 2-1 to advance to face the San Jose Sharks in the Western Conference second round. Nashville and San Jose have met twice in the Stanley Cup playoffs before. The Sharks won each first round series 4-1, both in 2006 and 2007. Forward Colin Wilson and defenseman Shea Weber each had two goals and three points to lead Nashville in scoring against Anaheim, which led the series 3-2. to two. Defenseman R- Roman Yossi and forwards Philip Forsberg, James Neal, and Ryan Johansson each had three points. Goalie Pecorine played the entire series and allowed two goals and 64 shots over the final two games. The San Jose Sharks defeated the Los Angeles Kings in five games in their best-of-seven first-round series. Defenseman Brent Burns Eight points, to, which were two goals and six assists, lit San Jose. Center Joe Pavelski had five goals and an assist, and center Logan Couture had a goal and five assists. Goalie Martin Jones played every minute of the series, going 4-1-0 with a 2.18 goals against average and a .912 save percentage. The Predators won two of three games against the Sharks during the regular season. For Cal 
Jarn Kroc had three goals and Weber had two goals and an assist. Johansson, Forsberg, and Mike Ribeiro each had three points as well. Rene was 2-0-0, allowing three goals and two starts. Backup Carter Hutton made 38 saves, but was on the losing end of a 3-2 shootout loss April 2nd. Joe Thornton had four points, one goal and three assists, and Thomas Hurdle had two goals. Jones was 0-2-0, allowing seven goals in two games, which, which had him with stats of 3.27 goals against average and a .868 save percentage. And then James Reimer... Made 28 saves and a win in his only start against Nashville with San Jose. Reimer was 1-1-0 and in two games against the Predators when he was with the Toronto Maple Leafs before being traded February 27th. The Predators look to advance to the conference final for the first time in their history. The Sharks haven't been into the conference final since 2011 when they lost in five games to the Vancouver Canucks. <clears throat> uh, for me personally, I think it will be the Predators. The, they start the series tomorrow, um, and I, I just think that the Predators are going to take the series. San Jose is not known for, you know, their good playoff history. You know, Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe, as touted as they are, have only had one good career series, but never a good playoffs. And that's the key thing for San Jose. Those are their two key leaders. Joe Pavelski, on the other hand, he shows up. And you need more, especially from Joe Thornton and, and Patrick Marlowe. But I think with the way Nashville is right now, I think they're going to take out the Sharks and move on to the Western Conference Final. I'm going to say Nashville in six. And I just think Nashville, you know, riding off the momentum of beating the Ducks and then having one day off going right into the San Jose series, that that that's going to help them a lot. So, yeah. So Predators in six, and I got either St. Louis or Dallas in seven for the Western Conference in the second round. And with that, we're going to go to break, and when we come back, I'm going to do some more analyzing of the Washington Capitals Pittsburgh Penguins series before tonight's game 1. Ever interested in meeting your favorite athletes or celebrities or looking for that right memorabilia for your collection? Then come to the CSA shows in Chantilly, Virginia. For more information go to csashows.com. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Experience Hockey Talk, Serious Hockey Talk for Serious Hockey fans. And we're also brought to you by Maryland Championship Wrestling, which on Friday, May 13th at the MCW Arena in Joppa, Maryland, Global Force Wrestling, led by Jeff Jarrett, takes on Maryland Championship Wrestling and their superstars for Collision Course. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit MarylandWrestling.com. And they have announced six matches already for their cards, so go check that out after the you listen to this episode. And with that, we're going to go right into the Caps and the Penguins, which starts tonight at 8 p.m. you got Pittsburgh, who is second in the Metropolitan Division, and the Caps, who are first in the Metro. Uh, this is a series that, obviously, the entire hockey world is excited about, um, specifically because it's Crosby versus Ovechkin. But, obviously, these two teams are not just about Crosby and Ovechkin anymore. It is about which team is going to be the better team. Um, Obviously, the last time these two teams faced off, it was in the second round of 2009 Stanley Cup playoffs where Detroit, or not Detroit, Pittsburgh won the series in seven games. And then, obviously, Pittsburgh would advance and eventually win the Stanley Cup, defeating the Detroit Red Wings in seven games. This is going to be a very tough series for the Caps and for the Penguins. Uh, a lot of key things to keep in mind is, you know, well, for one, Brooks Orpik could be coming back tonight. If that's the case, that is a huge boost for the Capitals' defense, which was already playing very well even after they lost him in Game 3. You got the uh, question mark of what type of impact Marcus, Joh- Marcus Johansson will have on the second line for the Capitals. Obviously, Andre Burakovsky being moved down to the third line to try to see if they can spark some things on that second line for the Caps. 
Caps power play is very dangerous, so is Pittsburgh's. The penalty kill for the Caps is very dangerous, and as is Pittsburgh's as well. So special teams is going to be a major factor of which team's power play is going to be able to dent the other team's penalty kill and how many times they can do it. Um, Another key thing is that for goaltenders, you have Matt Murray versus Braden Holpe. It is pretty clear from what I'm reading, Marc-Andre Fleury will not see this series due to concussion problems. I... You know, you got to give the edge to Brayden Holpe. Obviously, he's the Vezina finalist this year. And he also has more playoff experience than Matt Murray does, especially when it comes to Game 7s, which we all expect this series to go to. And then for the Washington Capitals, another key thing for them is getting, like I said with the second line, but also getting production from the third line as well from the fourth line because you're not going to be able to rely on everything on on Ovechkin, Backstrom, and Oshie. But then if you look at Pittsburgh and you look at their defense, they have Chris Letang, Ole Mata, and then Trevor Daly. And then you got Doomlin, Cole, and one other guy I can't name right now. So for the and they try to work their defense with speed, so for the caps they gotta hammer their defense and hammer them constantly when they go into the Pittsburgh zone on dump and chases. But at the same time, after Latang and Mata, your second pairing is just daily. And that's about it. And then your third pairing is kind of like, eh, it's okay. It's not the best. And yeah. And then when you look at the offense for the Penguins, yeah, you have Crosby, you have Malkin, you have Patrick Hornquist, Chris Kunitz, Carl Hagelin. But realistically, when you look at the Penguins, they're really just a one and a half or one and two thirds line team. You know, you, I mean, and, and and I say this because you look at the roster, you still got a lot of guys from the AHL on that roster. You, I mean, you, you just can't deny that fact. So for the Penguins, you know, a lot of those kids, they're on that high because they, they finally got their shot in the NHL. But after a while, and this is the thing with Pittsburgh too, they've been so hot, eventually you've got to cool down. And if you're a Caps fan, you hope it's this series when they finally cool down. So it's it's going to be interesting. As a Caps fan, I am scared. But at the same time, I know that with the changes that this team has made over the past two seasons... Get bringing in Trotz as head coach, Brian McClellan as general manager, the signings that McClellan has done, bringing in Brooks Orpik, Matt Niskin, and Justin Williams, TJ Oshie, uh, the trade of Brooks Lake for Daniel Winnick, um, the development that Trotz has really done with Burakovsky and Tom Wilson. You can see in the emergence of Evgeny Kuznetsov, he, you, you shouldn't be that scared. I know we all have this thing of, well, the playoff history, this. Yeah, but this is a different team. It has a different feel. So let's just see how the let's, – let's let's do what the team is doing, and let's, fo- let's follow the script, and let's take it one game at a time. If they lose a game, they lose a game. This team has responded well after losses. It took about – I think somebody came up to me and said – uh, it took like 87 games for the Caps to lose back-to-back regulation games. Let's put that out there again. 87 games before they lost two back-to-back regulation games. Obviously, if the Caps lose a game and then they bounce back with an, a win like they have all season, we shouldn't be worried Unless it's one of those deals where it's the Penguins win tonight, then the Caps win the next one, and they just go back and forth. Because then, yeah, that kind of screws the Caps if they keep going back and forth like that. But let's try not to think that way. So it's it's critical. Caps need to Caps need to play their game. They need to play the full sixty minutes too. And I think I was reading uh, Chuck Gormley's thing about the Caps having to stay disciplined. 
you know, in in the the playoffs against the, in the first round against the Flyers, they their the discipline was not the best. It really wasn't, and the Caps need to clean that up, especially against Pittsburgh. So they need to fix the dis. They need to better their discipline against Pittsburgh. They need to do better passes. They need to get better traffic in front of Matt Murray. They need to. They need to make it where they make Pittsburgh's lives miserable. And just another thought, and I brought this up on the last episode the other day, for the Caps and Penguins, when the Caps played the Penguins early on in the season, the Penguins weren't doing so hot. But then on the, same, on the other side of the coin, when the Pittsburgh Penguins won their two games at the end of the regular season, the Caps had nothing to play for. So we have no true definitive way of telling how this series can go because in the games during the regular season, one team sucked and one team didn't have anything to play for, depending on when you look at that type of time of the season when they played. So that's the reality of the fact. I'm hoping the Caps do win. I still think they'll win in seven. Um, I realized after... <coughs> We recorded yesterday, or the other day, that yesterday at work, I was looking at something on my calendar for setting things up for this podcast, and I realized that Game 6 lands when I'm at a concert. And I'm sorry, everyone, but I'm going to that concert because I bought the tickets to see Baby Metal back in December, and there's nothing that's going to make me not go to that concert and enjoy it. So... Dixon and Haley have their work cut out for them because they have to cover for me on watching that game. So, sorry Haley and Dixon, but that's just the way it is. And Dixon knows why because he was with me when I bought the tickets. So, but yeah, so I'm hoping five games in the Caps' favor, but honestly, I think it'll go to seven regardless. And honestly, I think outside the Dallas-St. Louis series... The Caps Penguins is going to be the series of the playoff of the second round, and I'm not saying of the playoffs, but just of the second round. So, fingers crossed, toes crossed. Get the Black Cats away from me, and uh, let's hope for uh, some uh, some really good Caps hockey in this second round against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to start this hashtag of Mike Talks Hockey to himself because that's essentially what this is right now because I don't have Haley or Dixon to talk to. So, hi guys, I miss you, and um, you better be ready for Monday when we record again because <laughs> this Mike Talks to himself stuff is, is it's depressing me, okay? All right. So, as always, this has been the Experience Hockey Talk Brought to you by the Tilda Kilt in Frederick, Maryland. The Tilda Kilt Pub and Eatery located at 5605 Spectrum Drive in Frederick, Maryland. Come to the Celtic-themed sports pub featuring the world-famous Tilda Kilt girls. For more on Tilda Kilt Frederick, visit them on Facebook today. You can follow the podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash experiencehockeytalk and on Twitter at, ex- at experiencehockey. And until Monday when we will be giving you some second round analysis of the first two games of the St. Louis series and the cap series. And yes, I say St. Louis series because on Twitter, everyone voted for the St. Louis blues. So we are now covering the St. Louis blues on this podcast until next time. We will see you on the ice.